Hello everyone, welcome to Reality of Pain. In this video, we're going to show you how to quickly, 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 quickly UV map and texture a model like this cute little bunny here in under two minutes um, from raw model to final product. And in this case, he's going to be a, like a statue. He's a, like a, something you put in the garden. So we're going to have it be a golden bunny. So it's not a complex texture with a lot of work. We just want to take something like this and put it on here, but make it look good from all perspectives. So we start off with this bunny model, and we assume it has no UV mapping. This one actually does, but pretend it doesn't, or the UV mapping is bad, we don't like it, we want to remap it. Uh, so, we first off say Control A to select the whole thing, all right? And then we go to, here we go, um, Utility Tools, um, Paint Setup Wizard. And we have color uh, check checks, we just want to do a color texture map. Um, you can assign whatever dimensions you want here. We have 2000 by 2000. Uh, all the UV map is checked by default and leave everything else default as it is. Okay, so we click execute. And you wait a second. Now here we go. We have a white texture map applied to this uh, model. So now we're going to show you how it, uh, how, how the UV mapping looks by a few different ways. First, if I click display UV mapping here, and I just move the cursor over. We see overlaid here is sort of this, this, all these little pieces of the surface are cut out and flattened and, and laid out in the UV space. And this sort of thing you can't directly paint in Photoshop on a texture map like this. But in a 3D painting application such as Reality Paint, you can paint on this quite easily. And I'll let us show you another way of visualizing what we just did. So we go to Viewports, um, Display Mode, Resolution Visualizer. I'm going to assign this to a hotkey, number one. So I right-clicked, Assign Hotkey, you press the key you want, and now it's armed. So I'm going to hit one. Now here we see um, how this is sort of laid out in UV space. Um, let me just show you. Okay. So... Now, if we look, zoom in here, we notice all these little tiny square, uh, squares here. These are all individual pixels on the texture map, right? And these larger squares are a bigger chunk and a bigger grid. So this is helping you visualize the UV mapping and how it's, um, how if it's stretched or flattened or so on and so forth. And so we look around at different perspectives. And if you notice in all these little nooks and crannies, Right. See, areas like this is where you expect the UVs to be stretched. But because we cut it into chunks and flatten it out, everything is sort of locally flat. So, um, so UV map stretching is set to an absolute minimum in this case. But the trade-off is lots of seams. And uh, traditionally, you would think a seam right in the front of your object, right in the middle of the face, is bad. But that is just happens to be not the case here, and I'm going to show you in just a minute what kind of great results you can get um, using this method. So let's get back to it. I'm going to hit this hotkey again to bring it back. Now, here is our brush image that we're going to use. So we put it onto here, and this is going to basically just texture our brush strokes. This is not the same as the actual texture map on the model. This is going to be projected onto the texture map. So let's take a paintbrush, paint, uh, paint tools, paintbrush, and we're going to start off with um, hidden surface removal set to none, right? And we're going to have fade by angle unchecked. This is important because we're going to use this later checked. So, uh, and another thing is you want to set up your projection. By default, it'll do this um, brush will, uh, image will get projected in the rectangle of the viewport, but we're going to get a little more specific here. You can already see I did it, but we'll do it anyway. Um, so I push Shift V to get the brush tile set up, or you can utility tools, brush tile setup. Here we go. And you choose the fixed plane, and you can go frame. And if I click on frame, and then click in the viewport here, and I stretch it somewhat. Um, 
larger than the object because I don't want the edges of this um, texture to start repeating midway through. And I also check auto align with viewport. And let me show you what happens if that's not checked. If that's not checked, I just define this flat plane. Now, if I rotate using F3 hotkey, then you notice how this plane is in the same place it was before right, as I move around, which is often what you want. But in this case, we want to make things easier. We want this plane to follow us in whatever view we're in. So if you say auto align with viewport, and now if I rotate, that plane is always going to be flat, flush, coming, you know, right flat uh, from our perspective. Okay, that's what we were looking for in this case. It makes it easier. Um, so let's go back to our uh, paint tools, paintbrush, and let's get rid of this. So we're just going to simply saturate the whole object with paint. Now, beautiful. But now if we look at it from the side, we'll notice that there is some stretching. Now this stretching is not UV stretching from the UV map. This is simply a side effect of the fact that this is a flat plane and we're projecting the paint in that way. So these steep angles off to the side are going to be stretched. But we have a, w a way of dealing with this, which I'm just about to show you. So we go to the left view. I use the left um, key on the keyboard as a hot key, or you can choose it here. Um, then take the paintbrush again, but I'm going to choose fade by angle. And leave these parameters as their default. Um, they work just fine the way they are. So now I still have this set to none. So the paint's still going straight through. But when I paint here, now you might expect because I just painted from this perspective that it's going to be all stretched on the other side um, but in this case when I rotate it is not this uh, is still has the same paint that it was from the previous time because um, the fade by angle means that as the angle from the surface relative to this plane becomes greater as they go off to the side, go over to the edges, fade the paint so it's just not being applied as much or at all. And so in that case, you're, you're not destructively um, altering the texture on this side while you paint on this side. Otherwise, you're going back and forth. You paint here and you get stretches. You paint here, you get stretches there. And it's you just can't deal with it. So this is how you deal with it. Okay, and now shift down is the setting viewport to top. And we notice from this perspective, we still have these stretches. All right, so I'm just going to go back to my paintbrush and I'm going to paint do the exact same thing. I'm just going to paint everything from this angle with fade by angle on. So notice that's three paint strokes, one from the front without fade by angle, where this is off, right? One from the left when this is on, and one from the top when this is on. And let's look at the result. We take a look at the result, and from every angle, that it looks flat and seamless and smooth. You don't see uh, stretching. You don't see uh, warping or seams. This could just be a nice golden bunny that you're going to put in your scene. He's in the garden, in the background. He's doing something. Point is, he looks good from all angles, and you just move on with your project. You don't have to spend two hours texturing the damn bunny who's just at the back of the render. He's done in a minute. He's done in two minutes. Finished. Now, I this video took longer than three minutes because I was explaining everything to you, so I'm just going to repeat the process now without talking so much, and you can see just how easy and quick it is to do that. So I'm going to clear that. Okay, so I do delete. Okay. And I'm going to reset everything to default. So shift. Ah, I can't do that. Okay. So control A, space bar, utility tools, uh, paint setup wizard. Uh, here, set this up. Da, 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 da. Okay, execute. Okay. 
now he's done. I'm going to drag and drop my texture in here, and I'm going to shift V um, to go a fixed plane, frame, space, drag it out, auto align with viewport, done. Okay, now I'm going to choose my paint tool, paintbrush, and none, fade by angles off the first time, and I'm going to paint. And da, da, da. Now from left view, um, fade by angles on. And from top view, fade by angle is on. And voila, done. That's it. Move on to the next thing. This bunny is looking good. Job well done. So this just shows you how powerful this auto UV mapping feature is uh, because you can just take uh, you can take objects that are not meant to be um, like foreground objects not with a huge amount of complexity and you just want to say I want to just texture this thing now and I don't want to deal with UV maps so you auto UV map it you do with this procedure and he's done he's ready you export it you put him in your scene you move on so thank you very much for watching this video i hope you found it informative please stay tuned we're going to have lots 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 more videos coming up and uh subscribe to the channel so you get the you get the updated right away in your feed and uh, i will see you guys next time bye